In this video, we're going to be talking about Erica's Sigilin upgrade, including how it works, some strategic ideas for using it, as well as some potential builds if you want to grab this powerful new refinement. So first off, Erica's Sigilin is now upgradable in the Weapon Refinery for 200 Divine Dew and 500 Arena Medals. This is a bit pricey as all Legendary upgrades are, but I think this one packs quite a bit of value. For this price, Erica can choose her special variant upgrade and this grants a nice extra plus 3 HP. It also bumps up her previous attack plus 3 buff to plus 4, bringing it in line with Ephraim's upgraded Sigmund. The new special effect reads as follows. During combat, grants bonus to attack, speed, defense, and resistance equal to the highest bonus on allies within two spaces. Each stat bonus is calculated individually, so first off, you will see to the right that Erica will need to have allies within two spaces of her for Siglin to proc its effect. Now let's explain the complicated part. Imagine Erica is still using her base kit and at the start of the turn buffs up Nino with the standard plus 4 attack and plus 4 speed buff. It is important to note that this is a field buff and you can visibly see these during a battle when your units have blue numbers for their stats. If Erica were to get into a fight within two spaces of buffed up Nino, then Siglin's effect activates and grants Erica plus 4 attack and speed as invisible combat buffs, essentially copying the same buffs Nino has. This will take into account all allies within two spaces, not just Nino, and it also can buff all stats if possible. One important thing to understand is that field buffs and combat buffs are different. Field buffs are again those blue numbers on a unit's stats and combat buffs are not visible, but are taken into account during damage calculation. The most important thing to know is that combat buffs can stack with other combat buffs and can also stack on top of field buffs. Field buffs, however, do not stack with other field buffs and only the highest value will apply if multiple field buffs are in effect. Knowing that Siglin's effect is a combat buff is very important to understand since it can freely stack with other buffs. Now let's look at some examples because this effect is a bit hard to understand without some visualization. We know how Siglin interacts with only one ally around, but what happens when there are two or more? Here we have Murr who is being buffed up by plus 6 attack, plus 4 speed, and plus 6 res. Doesn't really matter how she gets it. We also have La Rochelle who only is getting plus 4 attack and plus 4 defense. A key thing to note is that Erica does not have to be the one who provided the buffs to her teammates. This means she can benefit a lot from having other team buffers around. In this situation, Erica herself has no field buffs applied to her. Assuming Erica gets into a fight and Mir and La Rochelle are within two spaces, here is what will happen. Siglin will take a look at Mir first and say, oh, she has plus 6 attack, plus 4 speed, and plus 6 resistance. It will then add these same stats to Erica, so she will sit at plus 6 attack, plus 4 speed, and plus 6 resistance. Now Siglin looks at La Rochelle. La Rochelle only has plus 4 attack as a field buff, and Siglin only takes the highest bonus available, meaning Erica would still only get plus 6 attack. La Rochelle does have that plus 4 defense buff, however, and since Mir had no defense buffs, Siglin applies plus 4 defense to Erica during combat. You can see that even without any buffs herself, Erica can reach some crazy amounts of bonus stats. Continue to keep in mind that these are combat buffs, not blue field buffs. Let's look at another example to showcase just how powerful Siglin's effect can be. In this team composition, Erica is paired up with a Frederick with Fortified Cavalry and a Xander with Hone Cavalry. The turn starts and Frederick and Xander buff each other. Frederick now with a plus 6 attack and speed field buff and Xander with a plus 6 defense and resistance field buff. Erica receives no field buffs and plus she is an infantry unit anyway. Now if Erica were to get into combat and both Xander and Frederick were within two spaces of her, she will receive an in-combat buff of plus 6 attack, speed, defense, and resistance. Despite not having access to emblem team buffs, Erica can kind of still get them, which is pretty darn cool. It opens up some really neat mixed team interactions. Now let's add her brother Ephraim to the same team. Ephraim in this case has the same buff set up as Erica, so he would grant her plus 4 attack and plus 4 speed as visible blue field buffs. If Erica were to get into the same fight with Xander and Frederick, boat nearby, now she has an effective plus 10 attack, plus 10 speed, and plus 6 defense and resistance. The plus 10 attack and speed comes from the plus 4 field buff Erica already has, and the extra plus 6 combat buff thanks to Siglin. A reminder that Siglin only takes the highest bonus from allies, so if Ephraim were to have a plus 4 attack and speed buff on him granted by Erica, she will not be stacking it on top of the more powerful plus 6 buff that is currently on Frederick. In my opinion, you will want another buff on the team, like Ephraim in this situation, because visible field buffs on Erica will stack with Siglin's invisible combat buffs. Another thing I have tested out is what the panic status does to Siglin's effect. Here I have Erica who is buffing up Olivia with plus 4 attack and plus 2 defense. We will be comparing Erica's matchup with the archer on the bottom right. In the first round, Olivia does not get panicked by Luke, but is still within 2 spaces of Erica. In Erica's battle with the archer, Erica will deal 22 damage and the archer will deal 16 damage. In round 2, this time we will allow Olivia to get hit by Panic Ploy from Luke. This turns all her buffs negative. 
This time Erica will only deal 18 damage to the archer and now the archer will deal 18 damage to Erica. Erica lost 4 damage and it's clear that this is because Siglin no longer can copy Olivia's plus 4 attack buff because it's now minus 4. The archer also deals 2 more damage this round because again, Siglin won't copy the plus 2 defense buff on Olivia either. Important things to note is that even with negative buffs, Siglin will not negatively drop Erica's stats, but its effect is basically neutralized. So as with before, the panic status is a great way to counter Erica and her buff centric playstyle. Here is a good lesson for those of you unfamiliar. So the panic status actually just makes all positive buffs negative, and this is actually not the same thing as a debuff, as odd as that sounds. In this situation, Nino has a plus 4 attack buff and because of Clarice's bow, will also have a minus 5 attack debuff. Olivia will not affect testing because she is hit by the panic status from Legion's axe. When Erica attacks Clarice with Nino in range for Siglin, she will do 18 damage. However, when we move Nino out of Siglin's range, Erica only does 14 damage. This tells me that Siglin was actually still copying the plus 4 attack buff on Nino despite her having a total of minus 1 attack. So Siglin does not care about debuffs at all if that unit is still receiving a positive buff. I know this is a bit confusing, but I think it's still worth mentioning because it's a great example between the difference of the panic status and a debuff. Now let's talk about where the real potential of upgraded Siglin kicks in. Let us imagine we have a full mixed team each with all of the tactic skills. So Sigbert has attack tactic, Legendary Ike has defense tactic, and Lava Shell has res tactic. With Erica, imagine she has the not yet released speed tactic. Let's also imagine that everyone is passing each other the buffs, and in this example every unit is cleared to have a tactic buff. Sigbert would have plus 6 speed, defense, and res, Ike would have plus 6 attack, speed, and res, Lava Shell would have plus 6 attack, speed, and defense, and last Erica would have plus 6 attack, defense, and resistance. Taking into account everything we learned, if Erica is within 2 spaces of at least 2 of her triple buffed up allies, she will receive Siglin's combat buffs of plus 6 to every stat. If we add that to the 3 field buffs on her already, this means Erica can reach plus 12 attack, plus 6 speed, plus 12 defense, and plus 12 resistance. That is pretty incredible. For a unit whose main job is to provide support, if you can create the right setup, Erica can get so buffed up thanks to Siglin that she becomes quite the scary opponent. Let's imagine quickly what this would look like on a plus speed natured or plus speed minus HP natured 5 star Erica. Starts with 42 HP, 42 attack including Siglin, 38 speed, 26 defense and 28 resistance. When you include the field buffs and Siglin buffs from before, that brings her totals up to 54 attack, 44 speed, 38 defense and 40 resistance. Keep in mind this doesn't make her invincible by any means but considering that Erica's main role beforehand was to distribute buffs, I think this is pretty impressive. Even if she isn't sitting at an astronomically high attack stat, her speed is pretty ridiculous and only a few units in the game with speed increasing skills will be able to double her. This is the true beauty of this upgrade, and it's something that I think is hilarious for a unit like Erica. It's like when you're playing an online team game, and for some reason the support is the most dangerous enemy. Erica has decided that she has had enough with supporting her team and is taking matters into her own hands. Let's now talk about a few builds that can complement upgraded Siglin's abilities. Because Erica will still mainly want to be a support buffer for your team, you can increase her combat ability further with Fury. Fury isn't a bad skill for her in the first place, since Erica really enjoys all those increased stats. But with the potential of Siglin's buffing capabilities, you can't go wrong with even more stats on top. For any Erica build, I would recommend plus attack or plus speed with minus HP if you can get it. Plus attack helps her do actual damage, while plus speed places her in a really nice spot without additional speed buffs. Specials can be Lina or Moonbow and potentially Iceberg and Bonfire because all those buffs from Siglin can start to make either of Erica's defensive stats pretty high. The B skill slot is very customizable. I think Wings of Mercy could be cool since when Erica's allies get hurt, she can fly in and guarantee to be next to an ally who hopefully has some kind of field buff on them. The new chill skills could also add to a supportive build playstyle. Sacred Seal on the other hand can be a buffing skill so Erica's passing along three different buffs and in turn can copy those same buffs onto herself. Combat skills are also fine too. Again, this type of build is super simple and meant to let Erica continue to be that supportive unit. If you want, Rally, Defense, and Resistance is also a good way to cover all the buffs in exchange for a Mobility Assist skill. The other idea that I have seen gathering some attention is a Distant Counter build. Normally, Distant Counter paired with Erica's low base attack doesn't seem that great. However, this time by using upgraded Siglin and the full on tactics team we talked about, Erica can be a scary unit. As mentioned, you want the tactic skills to be run by other units, mainly so that Erica herself can receive the plus 6 field buffs for each stat. Because the other 3 teammates also receive all the same field buffs, Erica and Siglin can copy those same plus 6 buffs 
for an outrageous plus 12 buff to multiple stats. This build can use Vantage and that is mainly just to get that powerful one hit KO with a special proc. Use Ice Bridge because Erica's resistance is higher than her defense normally and by taking Distant Defense Sacred Seal, that Iceberg is getting a potential extra damage boost of plus 9 thanks to the ridiculous plus 18 resistance Erica receives when attacked by a ranged unit. Even if she is hit by a melee enemy, that is still an extra plus 6 damage boost from all the buffs Erica is receiving. If you do not have all the needed skills or say you have a minus res Erica, you can also swap in close defense or bonfire if you like. You don't need the full tactics team for this to work, it's just the way to get the most amount of bonus stats as possible. A team with regular hones and fortifiers can also work. So this build sort of aims to put Erica in the spotlight rather than being that backline support. Erica's average but balanced defense and resistance makes her a decent candidate for distant counter when you take into account all the extra buffs from her team. Distant counter can definitely work on a ton of units but Erica's speed combined with her decent physical and magical bulk put her in a pretty unique spot. This is definitely one of those builds that just is fun to use but I don't think is going to be breaking the game or anything. Before we end, I just wanted to quickly mention some really neat interactions Sigling can have with the following weapons. All of these weapons will buff the user and allies within two spaces, meaning that Erica can receive a field buff as well as copy the same buff from the user of each weapon. Soth's Peshcats is pretty cool because it's a plus 4 buff to all stats, meaning Erica being near Soth and with the Peshcats buff can get her plus 8 to each stat. Also, Peshcats will debuff the enemy team in an area, so really, Erica can become quite threatening if you can set up the right scenario. It may not be easy, but just wanted to let you guys know that Erica could make some new friends who wield these weapons. To end the video, I'll just provide some of my own thoughts on upgraded Siglin along with some gameplay. So first off, if you choose this refinement, Erica can still keep her same supportive role on a team. This upgrade will not amplify those abilities, instead it makes Erica herself a better fighter. Whatever buffs Erica provides, she has the opportunity to copy them and with the tech skills in the game, there are quite a bunch of ways to customize and stack different buffs. Erica can even copy the powerful emblem team buffs, but I think the tactic skills are still better for her because she can stack the Siglin buff along with the actual field buff. I'm sure there can be a lot of different team compositions if you just want an all around team buff for like Erica. Without planning out tactic teams or emblem team buffs, you can simply think of this upgrade as allowing Erica to receive the same buffs she gives out. It's pretty simple in that regard, but as you saw it can become quite crazy due to the way field buffs and combat buffs stack. I haven't even mentioned using other combat buffs like spurs or drive type skills. As we get more and more buff type sacred seals, the amount of customization Erica has just gets bigger. That's going to be it for this video and I hope you guys enjoyed. I didn't think it would be this long, but there's actually a lot to talk about regarding Siglin's upgrade. I think it's one of the best upgrades we've gotten so far because it's not too crazy at first glance, however you can really customize a team around Erica and she can reach absurd levels of buffing. It's definitely a neat ability that still has drawbacks, but as the game progresses, it will become easier to craft teams that synergize really well with Siglin's new effect. That's all I have for now, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Huh? Ah! Ah! Now it's my turn!